These are live pictures of the LVM-3 rocket. 2.35 p.m. is the takeoff moment. Uh, Pramod, uh, 16 minutes, you know, like, you, like, like Nagarjun was describing to us, 16 minutes is the, uh, your, the, the total duration of the first phase of this mission, uh, you know, after blast-off. You've been interacting with many of the scientists there. Uh, you know, what have they been telling you about this mission? Because this is the second attempt, uh, you know, of a Chandrayaan mission of this kind uh, that will see a landing on the moon, a soft landing on the moon. What was the sense you got from many of the scientists who are the very same scientists who were part of Chandrayaan 2? Well, like Shiv, one thing I have to very clearly mention, be it Chandrayaan, be it PSLV, be it SSLV, every mission ISRO gives 100% concentration and the scientists over here, even when, when I was speaking to them almost the past two days, a couple of them, I could see that they were extremely tired and I told them not to worry. This is going to be a definite success. They are claiming that they cannot take the chance because this is something that they are doing for India. And if, imagine if Chandrayaan, once it makes a su successful uh, uh, soft landing in the moon, India would be the fourth country to do so. And many scientists already believe that India already has the capacity to do so because no matter how many times various other countries had gone across the moon, landed on the moon, it was Chandrayaan 1 which actually gave clear importance about the water content on the moon's surface that too near the South Pole and then Chandrayaan 2 was there. That also until now the actual orbiter is providing a lot of high resolution information that is also being utilized in Chandrayaan 3. In fact, this particular module which is almost carrying six sensors, the important aspect here is to only maximum prove the technological demonstration of a soft landing thereby ISRO would prove that like you can go for manned missions you can make soft landings on the moon the only challenge here unlike Mars is that the moon does not have an atmosphere they have to do a controlled descent ISRO has already mastered it on earth and now they are going to prove I am 100% sure that they are going to prove it on the moon's surface as also ship okay uh, Prabhu, don't jinx it for us just yet. Uh, let's no, also no. keep our fingers crossed, prayer on our lips that everything goes smoothly. Our scientists have worked so very hard on this moment. Pramod, in the run-up to this, with the last 15 minutes or so to go now, take us through the process, the protocol that was followed today. We understand the vehicle was formally moved to the launch pad a few hours ago. The fueling was done. Run us through that procedure. I see so many people, by the way, who have gathered there to catch the launch live. Well, Sure is Akshita. This particular GSLV MK3, LVM3 uh, all has uh, uh, three stages of which the first one is considered as S200 rocket boosters. That actually uh, runs on solid fuel. That is like solid state fuel. That will take uh, the, uh, the uh, satellite, I mean the uh, rocket to a certain level from which the L110, that is a liquid state, that will take over and that will boost it forward. And on the fourth, uh, the third one, a very important one, something that is not available to many nations is the cryogenic engine and we have something called as C25 because cryogenic engine indigenously developed by ISRO, by India and that engine is the one that takes the uh, uh, module to the last phase whereby it will be uh, placed at 170 kilometers perigee, perigee which means the closest point to earth and from there it will make an elliptical orbit of which the maximum distance which is called as apogee will go almost to 35 plus thousand kilometers. So this is how the elliptical process will be there because there is a something called as tidal lock by which this will be locked, this satellite will be locked to the command center and it will make almost five rotations post which a very important aspect called as the lunar orbit injection should occur. ISRO has already done it successfully. I'm not trying to jinx Aksija but I have 100% confidence on ISRO. That's what I'm trying to say here because that's a very, very important properly calculated method and ISRO has proved it well, not once but twice already and also once in Mars and after that injection that particular module, the propulsion module, lander module and, uh, and the rover will revolve around the lunar orbit for nearly five times of which after reaching a 100 kilometer distance from the moon's surface the propulsion module will release and the actual uh, lunar module will go for the next step that will be the descent. They are using thrusters. Control descent will also occur. And this is where scientists have very clearly mentioned that this time that particular panel that has the uh, module has been given a kind of like extra advantage 
to land anywhere. Earlier, it was 500 to 500. That was the actual distance allotted mm -hmm. for the lander. And this is where the issue occurred because it started losing rapidly the, uh, uh, the height, but the lander software tried to calculate it. And there is actually a kind of lapse time by which they like, you know, nearly seven minutes uh, four and seven minutes back for the transmitters and, like, to get the uh, commands. And that turned out to be an issue. But now the particular lander has been given a distance of four kilometers to 2.5 kilometers of that place anywhere it can land. And second thing is that the actual load on the lander has also been reduced because already Sandrayaan 2 has mapped the Earth's, I mean, moon's surface. That data has been fed into the uh, lunar orbit. All the lunar orbit has to do is take a picture immediately within microseconds. It will like, measure it, calculate it with the preloaded images, and it will make a landing. Doc, I mean, uh, Director Somnath has also very clearly mentioned that the last phase of correction would be to avoid any obstacle that is above 30 centimeters or bigger, and that way the mm -hmm. landing will be done. Yes, this is going to be a success, Akshita. Again, I'm saying I'm not trying to jinx it, but this is actually as per the information given by ISRO scientists, and I 100% believe in them. You know, I, I, nobody is ever going to jinx this. Uh, you know, Pramod is, a, is an India-loving journalist, uh, so, I, you know, we have to trust everything he tells us because he's got, he's the guy, Akshita, with the best possible view in the okay. house. You know, nobody has a view like, like uh, Pramod. In fact, Pramod has a better view than even the scientists because <laughs> the poor scientists have to sit inside the telemetry station. Pramod has this beautiful, you know, filterless view of the launch site.